the main complaint that that I receive, they always complain that the CPM, the cost per 1,000 impression, like the, the price, the cost to acquire new customers, it is getting more and more expensive. So with mm -hmm. our help, actually with email marketing, uh, it actually helped them generate that extra cash for them to spend more on ads so that they can bring more new customers. You're listening to Ecomonics, a Debutify podcast. Your resource for one-of-a-kind insights into the world of e-commerce and business in the modern age. This is Joseph. I'll be presenting a wealth of industry knowledge from interviews with successful business people and our own state-of-the-art research. Your time is valuable, so let's go. Casey Chow, a man of dedication to his craft, stayed up till 3 a.m. his time so we'd be able to chat in the best environment he could offer. If that's what he's willing to do for a little old me, imagine what he could do for your business. Okay, don't spend too much time on that because you can check out this episode instead. Casey Chow is an advocate for email marketing, a format that has withstood a great deal as the internet continues to take shape around it. It's a proven method to boost your sales and create a better connection with your customers. If you do it right, of course. Enough out of me, let's hear from the expert. Casey Chow, it's good to have you here. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's make sure that I have a full scope of what you do. Um, you specialize mm -hmm. in email marketing, uh, and I know you also deploy chatbot and SMS functionality. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Uh, give us an overview of your agency for people hearing about you for the first time. So uh, my name is Casey Chow, and I'm an e-commerce email marketer, and I run an e-commerce email marketing agency, and we specialize in email marketing and chatbot and SMS for complimentary service and uh, just generate extra 10% sales on top of the uh, email marketing sales. So we are like a almost full backend marketing agency. You said you take 10% uh, of uh, email marketing sales? Uh, you mean commission? Yeah, is that, is that what you mean, commission? Uh, not really. I mean, chatbot and SMS can generally uh, generate an extra 10% sales on top of email oh. marketing sales. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So explain to us then how uh, important email marketing is. Uh, you know, what would happen to what happens to a business when they use it versus what happens to a business when they don't? Yeah. So as you might know, like Facebook ads, Google ads, they are getting more and more expensive throughout the years. And then e-commerce email marketing is a great way to actually uh, generate that extra profit. Like generally email marketing can uh, generate 20 to 30% extra sales for uh, e-commerce businesses. So also with e-commerce email marketing, they can actually build uh, an email list, which they can use it as an ex asset when they want to sell their e-commerce businesses. And I understand that uh, email automation, the way you've described it to me too, because we talked about this uh, prior to this interview today, is that email mm -hmm. automation is categorized into different flows. So what are, uh, what are the core flows that uh, people can expect to utilize if they were to deploy email marketing? So great questions. Actually, when people ask me about it, I would recommend them four flows. Uh, the first one will be pre-purchase welcome flows. And the second one will be abandoned cut flow. And then the third one will be browse abandonment flow. And then the fourth one will be post purchase customer thank you flow. So actually with these four flows, we actually tackle um, four stages of uh, buying behaviors. Okay, one thing I, I wanted to uh, touch on, because you mentioned that uh, as, as time went on, uh, Facebook ads mm -hmm. and, uh, and Google ads got more expensive as time mm -hmm. went on. And so I'd like to hear from your perspective what you were what you were up to as you were seeing this get more expensive. Were you trying to use Google advertising and Facebook advertising uh, prior to this? Uh, not really. That's what I have been seeing when I work with all my clients. Uh, the main complaint that, that I receive, they always complain that the CPM, the cost per 1,000 impression, like the, the price, the cost to acquire new customers, it is getting more and more expensive. So with mm -hmm. our help, actually, with email marketing, uh, it actually helped them generate that extra cash for them to spend more on ads so that they can bring more new customers. Also, uh, there's, a, there's a saying goes like this. So it costs more to acquire new customers, but it costs mm -hmm. less to sell to existing customers 
again and again. So that's basically how uh, e-commerce email marketing can help them. Because mm -hmm, yeah, at that point, it's an investment made into uh, customers and almost exactly. perceiving customers as assets uh, as well as, well, I'm going to say we, I'm not sure what other word to use. I was potentially uh, uh, sources of revenue. Yeah, exactly. So I want to get a little bit more detail on the, uh, the different types or AKA the uh, campaigns. So mm -hmm. what are the different email campaigns that you send and uh, how are they sustainable over, uh, over a long period of time? So with my strategy, with our team, with our agency, we usually combine promo, promotion emails and article emails, because um, I see that a lot of e-commerce brands out there, they just send promotion emails all the time. And uh, their subscribers will just get tired of it. And eventually they will just unsubscribe and their lifetime value will be very short. So um, we actually combine like article, valuable article emails to actually educate uh, their subscribers and actually engage them, encourage them to actually open our emails. And then actually their lifetime value will actually be uh, a, a little bit uh, more longer actually. You know, uh, so I, I'll admit that you know, I'm, a, I'm a customer. I spend mm -hmm. money on different things. And I would say over the last seven or eight years is when I started. I mean, I was always using my email address to sign up for things, but I would say I started noticing that I would be getting uh, promotional emails. And what happened to me, and this actually, it's interesting that this interview was lined up around the time that this happened, but basically I hit a burnout rate mm -hmm. uh, because when I, when I receive an email, I, I have certain expectations. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to be hearing from a friend or uh, or a colleague or a, a client from a freelancer side. And so uh, when I, when it's emails from different companies, even if it's somebody that I've only bought one product from, mm -hmm. the idea that I'm now getting 10 emails from them a month, it mm -hmm. starts to feel like the the value of the email overall is just is not as yeah. prolific compared to wanting to hear from somebody that I know and care about. So you, you've touched on it uh, uh, briefly. You talked about uh, adding uh, articles into it. Uh, but let, let me hear a little bit more about what you do to make sure that people aren't tired of hearing or tired of receiving emails. How do we increase the value of mm -hmm. emails to people? It really depends on your niche. So let's say you are selling some supplements in a health and fitness niche. So for, for your audience, they definitely want to hear more about the workout tips, the, uh, the supplement tips, and then maybe more engaging uh, articles uh, for them to open their email so that uh, they will uh, expect more emails like this in the future. Also, another another thing is that you will have to uh, control your email sending frequency. So let's say you have to test. So let's say for this week, you send out one content emails and then another promo emails and see the response. And then the response rate are good. And then for the next week, you will increase to two content emails and then one promo email in a week and then the third week you increase more and then you will see uh the, the response rates or the open rates like uh, you will see like if it hits a ceiling so in that mm -hmm. case you have to back up back down i mean so that's generally how we see uh where we should back off our frequency mm -hmm. and have you ever uh implemented emails where it would allow for there to be a dialogue between the recipient and the sender. Because I know whenever I get emails uh, from companies, I, I'm expecting it's almost like a flyer or a catalog. Like I'm not yeah. expecting to be able to, to interact with them. So is there anything that you can do to uh, boost interactivity? Yep. So with the article emails that I mentioned just now, actually mm -hmm. some of my uh, majority of my clients, they actually got a good response good responses from their customer base. So they their customers actually respond back and say, okay, we love this article. Can you guys tell me more about what this uh, product does? And then that's how they started the inter interaction between their customer support team and the customer. Yeah, and then it funnels people um, probably more likely onto the website where now exactly. they're exactly they've reached there and they're uh, consuming more content because yeah. a lot of those times a question they might ask might actually be an article that's already on the website that they just haven't spotted yet. Yeah, exactly. You have to let them know. And uh, overall, if they do it, if e-commerce businesses do it, and uh, overall customer experience will in improve actually. 
Mm-hmm. So one of the um, what I think what is one of the most attractive selling points uh, is the idea that these emails are automated and and as you put it in your one of your uh, in one of your blog posts is that it's working for the seller while they're asleep. I, so far, I've yet to do any work while I'm asleep, or I've yet to you know have anything improved yeah. while I'm asleep. So how much automation is really going on here? So I would say when it comes to setting up for uh, for an e-commerce business. Actually, there will be 50 and 50 percent uh, broadcast campaign, manual campaign, and then 50 percent like automation flow. So uh, for the automation flow, it really uh, like like you said, it it is automated. So once mm-hmm. we set that up, it will uh, generate sales for them if they drive like enough visitors to their website, and then it will just uh, do their work. So uh, but from time to time, our team will still actually go in and actually speed test and see how we can make the email templates, the sending time better so that it converts more sales for our clients. And in terms of scale, uh, I'm just picturing, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm one seller. I'm, I'm running my own uh, white label product. How much can, can one person realistically handle? Like if emails are starting to reach, I don't know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Uh, is there a, a, any point where people should start looking into getting more assistance or uh, do you start adding more people onto a project so that they can help uh, manage this? Okay, you mean, so do you mean like how, what's the uh, man hour behind one account? That would be, yeah, that's a good way of characterizing it. Yeah, so I would say we need at least for each account, I assigned one email marketer and one copywriter for that account so that they can mm-hmm. focus on that account only. And because when it comes to email marketing, it is a lot of work. So uh, writing and then setting up the technical sites, the graphics. So if one man handle it and um, the, the person will easily burn out and we can make mistakes right. easily. So uh, I would suggest like two person for one account, one email marketer, and then one copywriter for copywriting work and then graphic designer as well. So uh, yeah, that's what I suggest. Okay, and so it, it's because uh, b- b- people are uh, focusing entirely on one project, it's not so alarming if the emails happen to be reaching hundreds of thousands of people. And that's, and that's kind of the key to scaling is that you really can handle uh, things at a high level as long as you do have people who are specifically focused on that task. Yeah, I mean, true. how many hours of a week are they doing? Uh, I will say at least 40 hours, 40 hours. For, for one account. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, for, a... for our clients, for our clients, actually, they focus a lot on their front end, actually for their Facebook ads. And then they generally speaking, they don't have the time to actually go and learn a new skill when it comes to email marketing. So, uh, it takes a lot of time to actually learn the email marketing skill. So that's, that's the point where they want to outsource that. And when you're acquiring people uh, for this position, what I'm thinking along the lines of copywriters, because I'm imagining mm-hmm. myself there, in my own uh, in my own skill set, copywriting would be something that I could I can see myself doing. So, mm-hmm. what background did you find for copywriters? Are these people who've gone through, say, like a, an English degree in college, or is it really just a matter of like, hey, you know what, you, your writing is good, and you can just kind of intuit how uh, how people can handle it? Of course, when I tr- hire like a a copywriter for my team, I will look at their skill first. So uh, have are they good in uh, copywriting, sales copywriting? And then uh, are they native speaker as well? So when it comes to um, US, like a UK clients, they want uh, writers that can speak to their audience. So that's one thing that I look at. And then the second thing is the culture. Do they fit our team culture? So if they don't fit our team culture, then they will be like a bad apple to our team. So they will actually hurt our performance. So uh, that's the second most important thing that I look at. Yeah, I mean, that that, that was actually um, similarly what uh, brought me on to uh, the project here at uh, Debutify. They wanted somebody with that, uh, with that Western approach to it. Exactly. The tenor of my voice is uh, developed of uh, years and years uh, apologizing to people, you know, in customer service. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the one thing I want to uh, circle on is so once customers have uh, have signed on, provided that we're f- working out how often we should be reason to reaching out to them. That's all post acquisition. 
Uh, but I want to ask you about the acquisition. So what are some of the ways that you found people are most eager to uh, sign up for emails in the first place? So I just now I mentioned about the uh, pre-purchase flows. So mm -hmm. actually, we will set up like a pop-up in the website that connect to the pre-purchase flow. So for, for the pop-up, we actually sell it as an exit intent. So those who visit the website, and I, they, they are like a warm audience, warm leads, and mm -hmm. they, they still, they are still not sure if they want to purchase the item or not. And then they will, ex they will, they want to exit the page and that's where the pop-up comes in. So they we, for the pop-up, we'll actually provide like an incentive. So it could be like a free shipping discount code and then, or maybe like free ebook, free report on how to utilize the supplements to help you, uh, get healthier or something like this. So that's, we need incentive for them to subscribe. Otherwise, um, the conversion rate will be very low. They won't subscribe. There's no reason. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen uh, exit intent and point effect, yep. but it, it got to a point where I was actually trying to see if I could trigger the, the pop up. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very fine granular point, but I, I, you'd be solving a mystery for me. That's eating away at me, which is how is exit intent like actually triggered? Like, is it, I, I hover my mouse over to the X button mm -hmm. and it knows that I'm going off screen. Like, how does it actually pull this off? Actually, when it comes to pop up apps in like uh, Shopify, uh, they will have this feature where they can detect your mouse. Um, when your mouse uh -huh. move towards to the X on the page and they will actually show you the pop up. But we actually find that that is quite annoying when they just try to browse it or they, they just try to navigate the website and it just pop up. So we actually do it another way. We utilize Google Analytics to actually find out what's the average time of exit intent for, of like an exit, like page exit, the time. I and see. then we use that time for the pop-up. So once it re once the visitors like land on the website and then um, it will start it will start counting down right and then once it reach the time and then it will show them the pop-up so in this way it will be more effective and more accurate right that, that makes sense because yep. i mean i always have multiple tabs right i've i, I tend to ha like to either listen to music or listen to radio while i'm browsing so yep. if all i'm trying to do is get to a tab and it says wait don't go i says i wasn't going anywhere yeah true was... annoying yeah. right <laughs> Yeah, although you know, it, uh, it's it's it seems to remind me somewhat of uh, my own experiences uh, shopping in person, where I'm like, if I'm walking kind of towards the end of the store, and then the salesperson says, "Oh, just to remind you, we're doing a fifty percent off." So, you know, <laughs> it's it's funny how uh, it's it's still uh, very reflective of business and brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna uh, uh, move a little bit into uh, some 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 curiosities that I have in mind. Obviously, it's we're not. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you about, you know, your, uh, your, your pets or anything like that. But, okay. um, one thing I want to commend you on is that, and there's no way people are going to know this unless I, unless I say it, but it is 3am in the morning for you right now. Uh, <laughs> you were, you were very gracious to uh, pick that time because it meant that your environment wasn't going to be uh, very noisy. So first question quickly is, do you stay up late this often, which feeds into the larger question, which is what is your, you know, what does your day's work look like and how do you, how do you normally manage your time? When it comes to a uh, agency like us, we usually work with like uh, clients around the world. So mm -hmm. sometimes for some very important meetings that uh, require my attention, I will have to say that stay up late because I'm responsible for my clients results. So sometimes like, for example, if my clients, they are from Canada, US. So yeah, I will have to stay up sometimes, but majority of the time, my team of email marketing experts, they will just like handle it for me. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we, uh, we're our, our company, we're, we have people all over the world too. Yeah. And so we, we, we do notice, and there's very little that we can do about it, but we do notice that you know, when a message is sent, one person's in bed while another person is up and active. And there's like this time, there's a, there's a delay between uh, being able to give an answer and being able to, uh, uh, to ask the question. Very true. So, <laughs> yeah. I so, it's not that. something that uh, I, I really like, uh, I, I thought about too much, but it, it is interesting that, you know, 
uh, new new technologies and new innovations also lead to uh, new challenges. But then, uh, generally speaking, on a on a week to week basis or, or over the course of a week, uh, how uh, how often, like how much are you at work? I usually at work uh, most of the time. So that's uh, what I love doing. Like uh, mm -hmm. I like to learn and read, like uh, what's the latest trend in uh, digital marketing, and uh, so that I can uh, equip myself and help my clients better. So on average, I work around at least eight hours, and uh, it could up to fourteen hours per day. Depends on my workload, and uh, I have flexible mm -hmm. working time, and that's a good thing about this business. But the bad thing is sometimes I might have to stay out late for my clients. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, once again, you you have my gratitude for it. <laughs> I, I want to get a, a little uh, bit of a history in. It's one thing that I, I like to do with each guest because we're noticing themes of um, when people before they got into the uh, e-commerce sector, what they were doing before, mm -hmm. and and the common theme is that. I mean, nobody was like on the streets or anything, but people were, were definitely looking to find themselves in a better place. So I'm curious to know if that is, uh, is true with you. But the general question is, what were you up to prior to this line of work? And how did it get into it? Yeah, so before I started like my first online business or my online thing, I was a college student. And then like just like everybody else, I want to like uh, make some money online without having to go out and work for some somebody else. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then after that, I just, I have, like I had one friend, uh, he was doing like uh, affiliate marketing and then basically he just introduced me to my first email marketing coach and that's how I got started in the uh, online space email marketing. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't have to delve too much into it because yeah. I know I don't want I never want to get too off topic, but what were you in college for? I studied, animation as, as my major, but right now I'm doing completely different things. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, actually, uh, maybe I can talk to you uh, about it uh, about afterwards, but um, how I got into my, uh, how, where I am today was I started doing uh, animation as a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah, Great. so I might, I might ask you a couple of questions about that, but uh, people aren't here, aren't here for that. So we'll, uh, yeah. uh, maybe we'll save that for like a Patreon exclusive down the line or something. <laughs> so one element to, to your business that I have a lot of respect for is that you're willing to bow out of an arrangement if you don't feel it's the right fit. So I'd like to know more about that criteria. And was it always this way or was it the result of maybe a, an experience you had where you learned a valuable lesson from it? Uh, if you have any examples, that would be great. But obviously, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to take advantage of anybody's privacy. So uh, mm -hmm. I leave it to your discretion. Yeah, so basically, we are very strict with uh, our clients. Uh, the our clients' requirements. So uh, we, we want to make sure they have like-minded mindset as, as we are. Otherwise, it wouldn't work in the first place. And then they will be, uh, they are willing to invest in their business. And then they are willing to like uh, almost hands off and let us do our thing. If not, mm -hmm. if they just go in by themselves and just do their own thing without our consent, and then it, they will just mess things up. And then like we had, one experience where uh, what the client just uh, went in and just uh, tweak something, tweak something without letting us know, and then actually the campaign result just mess up, and then uh, he act, that that client actually uh -huh. blame us on that. So uh, that's basically about it. I don't want to get uh, too much details, no, but yeah. Sure, sure. No, I, that's understandable. I always, uh, I, I feel those questions are important to ask because I yeah. think it helps filter th uh, people as they're listening in case they're wondering uh, what those might be. So it's mm -hmm. just a, a little bit of a characterization. I, I think it's helpful. Yeah. But I, but I definitely understand. Like it's a, it's a matter of trust. And yeah, somebody goes sure. in and tries to do your job for you. Well, you know, hey, that's, that's. I, I certainly wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't. Yeah, it's all about trust, either. exactly. Yeah. So next thing I want to uh, ask you about is uh, competition. So mm -hmm. the broad theme, uh, and again, these are things that I'm noticing as I talk to more people, is that generally speaking, everybody that I've talked to uh, contributes to a bigger picture. Uh, mm -hmm. There's people who do website reviews. There's people who are known for mentoring. There's uh, master dropshippers. Uh, and, and you bring your own contribution to the table as well. Uh, email marketing is a key element of it. But I, I, I guess I would like to know if you have competition and how you deal with it and how you keep an edge over them. Yeah, true. So actually, uh, 
we do have a lot of competition when it comes to email marketing agency. So mm -hmm. uh, we do the same thing, which is email marketing, but we do it a little bit differently. Uh, each of us, it, like different agency, like they have their own uh, strategy. Um, they are a little bit different. So with us, we actually want to like, uh, we take most amount of the risk and then we actually have like a low risk startup cost and then we, uh -huh. for our clients, and then we also charge uh, based on performance. So we actually like uh, take commission from the email sales that we generate. I've seen that a lot with a lot of uh, business models. I spoke to uh, Robin at Udropy and and they and, and our and our platform to beautify. Um, it's, it's it's such a fair system. It really is mm -hmm. because it gives people the opportunity to generate the revenue first mm -hmm. and then scale up the operation as, as they feel necessary. Yeah, true. So we want to build that trust first. We take the risk and then have, let them have the low risk. So, uh, we would, we want to demonstrate them the result that they, that they can get. And then after that, they can decide if they want to pay us flat fee or continue with the commission base, because we are very confident mm -hmm. in what we do and our strategy that we can, generate enough sales for them and also uh, have enough income for our agency. So that's basically about it. Mm -hmm. And would there, would there be an advantage to going flat rate over going commission? Both are good. Both are good. So, uh, but we prefer commission. That's how we, sure. yeah, that's with our pricing structure. That's how we differentiate ourselves. Okay, fair enough. I notice a few of your uh, uh, blog articles are, are, are you do you do focus on uh, certain uh, experiences in certain industries, like you have a few articles on the dental industry, uh, one of them was on wellness, one of them was on fitness. And I noticed the theme there is that they were all within the realm of health and, and personal, right, well, yeah, personal health. So have you noticed that email marketing uh, has excelled in uh, certain areas where maybe it hasn't excelled in others? Not really. So actually email marketing right. works for all of the industry. So, uh, for my article, sometimes I want to, uh, maybe I, uh, during that time I had uh, a few requests about how to do, how to do email marketing for uh, that niche. And then I would write certain articles to fulfill their uh, desire and teach them how to do that. Sure. That makes sense. I mean, having seen that it was, um, some of the articles are based off the dental industry. That's not uh, just going through learning a lot of the different uh, e-commerce categories. It's not something that would have come to mind immediately, but I can also understand that receiving an email from a, a dental office uh, means that there is a lot of information they can convey about uh, developments in tooth health. There was this whole wave of information that came out like last year about how uh, tooth health is related to, uh, to uh, heart disease. And, you know, that's, that's just valuable information that I picked up. Uh, just uh, paying attention to these. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I've got a personal development question for you. Mm -hmm. One thing I spotted uh, from your uh, Instagram page is that uh, you're big on motivation, uh, self-actualization, uh, confronting one's own fear. I'd like to know how you condition your mindset to have this drive. And uh, while you're at it, specifically like uh, what you do uh, diet-wise and uh, exercise-wise and how you maintain your energy levels. And, and this is really important to me because I want to uh, always pick up information about how people stay energized, which is huge. Like, what's you don't want to you don't want an experience burnout if you can avoid it. And I, I've dealt with it a couple of times, and I definitely don't want to deal with it again. Mm -hmm. So for me, for me to actually uh, stay energized and actually keep my mind refreshed, I like to go to the gym. So I like to like uh, lift weights, mm -hmm. and then uh, I like to do that. So uh, when it comes to go to when it comes to like lifting weights, actually, I uh, reprogram my mind to actually push for my limits every day, every single day. And then that actually becomes my habit in every area in my life. So uh, when it comes to business, when I face some, when I face some like uh, difficulties, I will actually push that forwards. And uh, so actually gyms helps a lot and that helps mm -hmm. with like mental uh, health actually, uh, because uh, for businesses, for agent, for businesses like us, like virtual company, like the beauty fights, um, we don't have a lot of chance to actually talk to people face to face, like in person. I mean, so I would say like going to the gym really helps a lot and stay disciplined as well. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I mean, and believe me, I ask everybody about this. It's <laughs> something that I'm just trying to get more information on. 
All right, so we're going to move back into uh, engagement for people who are uh, uh, ready to go. So one other thing that I also want to know about is that you have a few partnerships uh, as per your website. Yep. You're partnered with Shopify, Clavio, uh, Optin Master, and uh, PostScript. Yep. So what's your relationship with these? Like, can you describe a little bit about how they integrate into your workflow and you know what people expect to? Uh, how people expect to have them integrated into the work you do? Uh, actually, for that kind of partnership, we will have more internal relationship with the internal team. In like, for example, Clavio, uh, we have like a great relationship with the customer success manager, and that's like a close relationship. And then for any any other like a clients like account problem, and we can actually reach out directly to the customer success manager, and that problem will actually solve. Uh, quick, quicker when compared to reaching out to the customer support. So this is more, this is the main benefit, mm -hmm. I would say. All right, uh, next up for you. So this is an important one because uh, reputation uh, is everything in the relationship between customers mm -hmm. and the and the sellers. So what should we be doing to uh, optimize emails to keep a good reputation with uh, recipients? Yep, so uh, when it comes to sending reputation inbox rate, we, there are a lot of factors that will affect that because yeah like obviously if you don't have good inbox rates uh, even you have like good the best copy the best strategy your email won't uh, your subscribers won't see that email actually so the first thing i would say is like uh, focus on more text in the email templates and then we actually use like a 20 20% and 80% rules when it comes to email templates, we use like 80% text and then 20% image. And then that, that will further reduce the uh, file size of the email and that will actually help your emails inbox better and not actually go into spam. And then also uh, the next thing will be the sending frequency. And if you send like uh, too much, like uh, let's say you send, you have been sending three emails, emails campaign per week and then you mm -hmm. suddenly you, you, you see that your open rates uh, drop significantly. And that's a big sign that you need to reduce your sending frequency. So uh, that's a big two, the top two tips that I give to the audience, like how they can optimize their inbox rate and sending reputations. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing I, I, we were, I was almost going to uh, forget to touch on this too, but uh, I just want to, Really to make sure that we cover the chat bot and SMS mm -hmm. uh, side of the, your operation too. And I know emailing is, is your is your strong suit, but how do you integrate SMS and how do you integrate chat bot? And same thing, how do you maintain a good reputation with those as well? Yeah, so when it comes to chat bot and SMS, we treat uh, both as complementary uh, marketing channel on top of the uh, email marketing. So email marketing always uh, comes first and email marketing is a core. So we actually, uh, when we, once we establish the email marketing site for our clients, we actually uh, look into our existing email marketing strategy and then tailor like the, the, the timing, the message for chatbot and SMS and tailor that for the email marketing sites. So it will be congruent throughout all the channels. So they are seeing the same kind of uh, message, uh, the brand views across those channels. And so when you were saying earlier that you have workers specifically on uh, the account, mm -hmm. I would uh, I would imagine that the person that they're dealing with the emails and they're also making sure that chatbot and SMS are also uh, set up. And so that's all part of their function. Exactly, yeah. Excellent. Well, I, I have to say that this sounds, that just sounds good, but it sounds important because mm -hmm. emailing has been around for a while and and it's and it's interesting that it's, it's been established for quite a while, and yet there's still a lot of innovation left in the email sector. There are still things that we need to uh, figure out to keep them optimized, especially because kind of like how Facebook and, and Google ads, uh, they've saturated. Emails have also been dealing with saturation too. So before we, uh, we get you to uh, wrap this up and let us know how we, can, uh, how we can engage, I would like to hear a little bit about your thoughts on emailing uh, in the future. Do you think... Uh, do you see any major changes or trends uh, happening in the email space? Uh, when it comes to email marketing, it is a lot more stable uh, when compared to a platform like Facebook, uh, Google, uh, because like uh, yeah, like you as you as you might know, like 
Facebook and Google chatbot and they change very frequently. And then like email marketing is still going strong and not it's still it's still almost the same as the past, but just minor changes throughout these years. So I would say it is still going strong and email marketing is still is going to be more in demands in the future as like more and more there will be more and more like e-commerce businesses in the future. Yes, that's, that is that is true. Even for people who are just running a one-person operation, uh, that there's so much that they can accomplish by being able to email out to people. I mean, it it, it goes back to just the importance of scale, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked to a lot of dropshippers, and uh, what permits their success is their ability to scale their operation, yep. being able to sell lots of product without having to uh, acquire a lot of it too. So it's interesting. I mean, email as a format, it's it's adapted. To, to the times without actually changing too much of its own foundation. Yep, true. Very insightful. So uh, for people who are ready to get started with you, uh, let's wrap everything up we've talked about today in a little bow mm-hmm. and let listeners know uh, what should they do to get in touch with you and what should they have ready to go when they do? Yep, so if they have an established e-commerce business, no matter it is drop shipping or real brands or white label brands, uh, they have uh, paid ads running, so that's like a, the least amount of um, least amount of requirements that they need to get started with us. So I would say if they want to get in touch with me or my team, so reach out to caseychild.agency, and then you will know how to how how to reach us. And I would also uh, recommend checking the website out too, uh, because the blog does have a lot of uh, case studies and examples of, uh, of of a lot of what you put into practice too. Yeah, true. So they can actually check out my blog uh, from time to time because I, I write a lot of blog posts on email marketing, how they can actually implement the email marketing by themselves. And yeah. Excellent. Well. Uh, I thank you for your time. Uh, I know that it is uh, the sun is going to be coming up any minute there, so we'll we'll let you go. Uh, have a good sleep. Thank you, thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you as well, Casey. You might have found this show on any number of platforms: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or right here on Debutify. Whatever the case, if you enjoy this content and want to help us thrive, please. Take a few moments to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you think is best. We also want to hear from you. So whether you think you'd be a good guest or want to weigh in on anything related to our show, you can email podcast at debutify.com or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Finally, this podcast is created by the passionate team at Debutify. If you're ready to take the plunge into e-commerce or are looking to up your game, Head over to Debutify.com and see how it can change your life and the lives of many through what you do next.